Greetings everyone and welcome back to episode 6 of us playing in Kazurudex. We're the United Kingdom of Canada and Britain, but we'll see how long that lasts. As you can see, this is how the map of Europe turned out, with Austrians taking pretty much all of Northern Italy, the French Republic, or French Kingdom under the German Empire, and we took all of the British Isles because we are special, and the Germans got half of Spain while uh, the French actually got the other half of Spain. So, it is what it is. But uh, we gotta talk about a focus I already completed for us called Return of the Queen. London's back in her hands now, the capital and the very heart of the British Empire. At long last, we can restore the United Kingdom and the monarchy. Transition away from the war economy. With the liberation of Britain and the end of the Second Bell Creek, we've no use for the war economy that was put in place during the liberation. We should begin a transition economy back to a civilian one, finding a place in the economic world now that our nation has been invigorated by the liberation of Britain. Our homeland reclaimed. After long and brutal conflict, we've done it at last, Britain. Beacon of civilization, ruler of the waves, have been freed upon the cynicalist tyranny. Our beloved homeland has been reclaimed, and never again will she leave her grasp. Even now, as we speak, hundreds of exiles have already returned to their ancestral homes, with thousands more well on the way. As the conquered populace once more submits to the rightful rulers, those old enough to remember their former United Kingdom are expecting that soon enough, the multi-party democracy of the times past shall return, however. As the old orders are restored in short order, this democracy is now where to be seen, indeed. The United Kingdom has changed much in long years of exile. Perfidious democracy, giving a voice to the unwashed masses, has been ended, and the royal nobility has been restored. Its most gracious majesty's true divine authority and right has been restored to its full strength, and the dream of George V has been achieved. The body of George V, having laid in state in Ottawa since his death, has been moved to the royal vault in Windsor Castle. Although rebuilding has already begun in earnest, much still remains to be done, after all. Restoring the greatest country in the world to its former glory, well, that takes time, even for the exiles. God save the Queen! And Mackenzie King retires. Sir William Lynn. Mackenzie King was retired, lead, having led the Liberal Party of Canada since 1919. He first became Prime Minister in 1925, and was heard to say, It's time for me to move on. St. Louis, uh, Louis St. Laurent will replace him as the leader of the party, signaling a def definite shift in power towards a more progressive wing of the Liberals. Let's hope that he enjoys retirement and empire from London to Ottawa. The United Kingdom was reborn when the Canadian government ruled in with Britain. Now London in her hands. Uh, the mighty British Empire controls its sacred homeland. The King once more holds an empire spanning across the Atlantic. The Queen has returned. I like what we call it King uh, Elizabeth II. Ooh, this would be nice. Ooh. Our secret guide. Britain has longed for the king from a queen for the many years her sovereign was apart from her, her citizens. We can now see that the failure of the old order was a failure of liberalism. With a queen returned to her throne, we can finally take the action against the pitiful liberals and socialist traitors who betrayed her king. Queen. We're still going to put down a lot of resistance in America, but we'll get there. Liberty Day. Across the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Canada, Stores and factories are closed as the British gather in the National Day of Remembrance in honor of those who have lost their lives in the struggle against cynicalism. The central activities of the day occur in London, where on the anniversary of his death, the remains of George V has been interned in a special vault in an elaborate ceremony at Westminster Abbey, attended by Queen Elizabeth, the royal family, and the leading political military figures. This solemn act has finally fulfilled the late, Queen's uh, late King's dying wish to return home. Out of the ceremony, Queen Elizabeth has led a procession to the east end of the mall, where a monument to George V was unveiled. The Queen stated that the monument commemorated all those who had been victims of the former regime and that never again would cynicalism threaten British liberty. To honor the victims of cynicalism and keep fresh in memory what had been nearly so lost and so dearly regained, henceforth this day every year is to be celebrated as Liberty Day for Queen and Country. Honestly, we're not missing very much here anymore. We need a little more of that. Uh, planes, I guess, you know? We're definitely going to need them. Uh, advanced holes. Here. We need way more chromium now. There you go. But yeah, overall, not bad. Look at that. 733 factories. We're looking pretty good. Oh, I also took all of, all of Mexico as well. Um, other than that, we're looking pretty decent. We have Dominion of Delhi here. And we're still working on these guys. Not too bad, not too shabby. You are going to put down more resistance. Somewhere. Oh my god, that's a lot of resistance up there. Uh, I'll go back to America. Hey, no resistance in Upper Mississippi. That's nice. Yeah, go to Mexico. Oh, look at all that. Dealing with American resistance would be nice, but... You know, England, IEDC. Monarchy is high. Very high popularity of Queen Elizabeth. We also have a couple of tea here, too. Um, Canadian political decisions. Eh, American Civil War. That would be a complete waste. Yeah, economic policy. We can build more. We don't really have to, though. So... But eventually abolish Parliament. Ah, yes. What was the system of bickering yes men and bureaucrats ever good for? Our systems were better off when the only force in Britain that mattered was the guiding hand of the king. These mistakes will not be repeated, and Parliament shall not return. The returning aristocracy. 
Many of the wealthier exiles have returned to Britain, only to discover that their lands have been stripped, their businesses nationalized, and the homes now occupied by someone else. They want these things returned to them, but returning it to them now means stripping it from someone else, imperial integration. While well, Canada is used, their to the, used to their status as a little subject of the British Empire, the direct governance of Canada by the king or queen has left a bad taste in the mouth of many Canadians. With a heavy investment by the monarchy, Canadians will slowly yet surely get used to living under the full guidance of London. Try the syndicalists. The fate of the unions is very separate from the union leadership, in particular those people who ran the Union of Britain and who made the decision to pit British soldiers against British soldiers. They must be put on trial and their fate made an example of all those who would follow them. Cleanse the red parasites. We were separated from our home for almost 20 years, all thanks to the vile Reds. Their corrupting influence has done an incalculable amount of damage to the Isles we call home. They must be dealt with harshly, and Britannia rules again. The road to reconstruction was a tough one to embark down, but now we can look towards a brighter future. Britain's Britain restored to its rightful place on the world stage, more happy and glorious than ever before. Aid Britain with the reconstruction. The Union Jack once flies again over the House of Parliament. However, Britain is far from recovered from the devastating effects of syndicalism to help entente forces um, or progress forward industrially. Canada should use some of its vast economic assets as aid in the construction of our mother country. The McNaughton Plan. Now that we've established friendly governments in Europe, we can begin embarking on vast reconstruction projects all across the continent. Under the guidance of General Andrew McNaughton, a program to modernize and repair the continent's industry will be started, providing Europe with a new industry and preventing her allies from falling into the spell of anus, the villainous Huns. A return on investments. Europe, once a war torn land utterly destroyed by the two devastating world wars, has begun to prosper like never before. Now that Europe has become an industrial powerhouse in its own right, we've been laying the framework for a truly united and interconnected European community, ensuring a path to peace in Europe and providing our economy with much needed compensation for the investments we have made. Oh, there you go. What do we got here? Mm, completely neglected tanks. So not anymore. There you go. What do we got here? Oh god. Plain stuff. Uh, mechanize, mechanize, trucks. There you go. Ah. We can make an, another division here and there, so. Marines have done very well in this campaign. I'm very proud of them. Uh, steel belt's looking pretty good. You can do that little section if you want. It's fine. And yeah, you guys, Patrick Murphy, you're gonna come down here. There you go. Let's add him to this group for now. Since uh, our allies are just fighting for France, and Delhi is just fighting against Siam. So we're gonna end up at war again no matter what. Pretty normal though. Probably wouldn't have it any other way, really. Could solidify control. Sure, why not? So, what do you do with all this American resistance? That's a good question. Um, a Canadian industrial belt. Our fighting men are back from war and in need of employment. It would be wise to construct a new industry for its citizens to work on. The area on the Great Lakes, namely London and Toronto, will become Canada's new industrial centers, similar to that of the American counterparts such as Chicago and Detroit, which have been now reduced a little more than rubble. New infrastructure projects. Canada. As vast, mostly unoccupied land and comprised of small clusters of highly populated areas. We sure Canada's position as a great power. We must work hard to link our nation together. With that in mind, the Prime Minister has authorized the construction of many great infrastructure projects, such as the Trans Canada Highway, the St. Lawrence Seaway, the Trans Canada Pipeline. These projects will help connect our vast nation as well as providing countless jobs. Trade prowess. One of the most powerful tools a nation can have is amicable trade relations with the nations of the world. Our position in the world provides us with many opportunities for trade. With vital ports such as Halifax, Vancouver, seeking thousands of ships, seeing thousands of ships, exchanging goods in their docks, however. Our best is simply not good enough anymore to help with our mastery of the trading arts, as well as upgrade our current bottle ports. In addition to construction, more to meet the demands of increasing the commercial world. Uh, I want to try them. Because right now, are we losing support here? No. Reconstructory, or reconstruction Authority announced. Well, the monarchy has restored, been restored to the British Isles. Many policymakers feel that the country needs to undergo a different, uh, difficult desyndicalization process. Syndicalist rule permeated deep into the British culture and society, as well as economy, so that must be dealt with along, along the way. Um, with the many homes that were laid away during the war, everything must be rebuilt. On the steps of the damaged Westminster Parliament, Prime Minister announced our Prime Minister announced to a hopefully but unenthusiastic crowd that the BB BRA, British Reconstruction Authority, has been created and granted broad governing powers to see the rejuvenation process done as swiftly as possible. So if it works, is it better? Cool. What else we got here? Years of war have ravaged Great Britain. More than that, islands have been cynical, have been cynicalist, under cynicalist rule for more than a decade. For the second time in the life of most British citizens, their entire world is being turned upside down. The trials be held across 
Uh, the the tor country torn down and rebuffed from scratch, and the old mate knew once more. Past Settlement Law Act. Acts have encountered resistance. Those British citizens who fled the UK after it fell to syndicalist rule, or the exiles, have encountered increasing resistance as they now begin to return to the country in large numbers. Disputes over ownership of homes and estates which have been abandoned are frequent, and resentment towards the wealthier exiles who return untouched by war and poverty has become the norm. Queen Elizabeth launched a radio appeal to the British people, reminding them that the exiles are the very reason their freedom has been regained. That not that they are returning conquerors, but as lost lambs brought back into the flock. Even so, many believe it will take many years to heal the social divide between these two groups. Quite worrying. Lots of veterans will now be returning home to Britain, and so much land now that holders makes it makes sense to grant the land to soldiers as a form of thanks from the government. Not to mention that ensures the land does not remain follow for want of someone to work it. Implement Abercrombie Plan. Abercrombie knows a greater London plan that damage down to the country's capitals left many thousands in the city homeless. Major work will have to be done uh, to, to rebuild it, but at the same time, uh, we have an opportunity to revamp the city's transportation and zoning groundwork to make up for so many centuries of haphazard growth and planning. Syndicalist militias remain active. While there's a feeling among most Britons that the war is over, and their willingness to fight has been exhausted, there does remain a number of syndicalist militia groups that are still active. They remain hidden both in the northern foothills and buried deep within the UK's larger urban areas. Militia leaders are reportedly trying to make stoke resistance against Queen Elizabeth and the tyrannical reconstruction authority. And while they have met very limited success so far, it can only get worse if the BRA takes actions that anger socialists once more. We need to move carefully. Mystery and efficiency. Can't rather the political establishment is, quite clearly, dominated by men. It's rather rare to see a woman in the bureaucratic position, but Phyllis Gregory, named, named Miss Serene Efficiency, has broken through those ranks and made quite a name for herself. Born in 1903 in Nova Scotia, to a modest family, she quickly showed herself to be an intelligent girl. She quickly learned piano as a child and was an excellent student. In 1925, she graduated from the University of British Columbia, earning a bachelor's in economics and political science with first-class honors. Along with earning her bachelor's, she also earned the Susan B. Anthony Memorial Scholarship, allowing her to study at Bern Mar College in Pennsylvania where she earned her Master's of the Arts. After that, she moved to Germany and studied at the University of Marburg, where she wrote her thesis. Eventually, she came back home to Canada, and she managed to get the position in Ottawa as an economist. Here, her education, intelligence, and sheer skill caused her to rise, rise to the ranks, even befriending the conservative R.B. Bennett. With the onset of the homecoming and the war, she only continued to shine. First, she was put on the wartime prices and the trade board as an economic advisor. After that, she became the fats and oils administrator, putting her in charge of countless items, soap, paint, starch, printing ink, as a few examples. She was also tasked with finding new sources of oil to help with the war effort. Today she's been made the chief economist of the tariff board, the highest office a woman can hold in Canada, an intelligent, elegant woman, who's fought under every position and accolade she's been given, an example of all Canadians of what's hard work and determination can bring. A truly remarkable woman. I'm gonna start with this one. It's more war sport, even though I do prefer some stability. Create the Relief Agencies Council. There are a number of relief agencies such as Karen and the Red Cross who are eager to come into Britain. Their help is sorely needed, but some kind of agency to coordinate them is, de is desperately required. Then I mentioned that we wish to avoid the possibility that syndicalists or even the Germans use such relief efforts as a means to spread propaganda and influence. Legacy well, of the Revolution. Ooh. What do you do with the Pigo Report? Not everyone is enthused by the idea of healing, hearing a report by William Beveridge, as his suggestions for the government will undoubtedly be seen through as a lens of socialism. Instead, a suggestion has been made to sponsor a report by famed economist Arthur Cecil Pigau, one aimed at re uh, restructuring the country rather than solely focusing on society. Expand the power system. The United Kingdom's power group has been left in a sorry shape out of the end of the war. It was a very outdated and cold dependent to begin with. Uh, citizens have needed to endure rolling brownouts for long periods. We need to repair and upgrade the system as quickly as possible. Yeah, that'd be good. Union soldiers return. Now, uh, that the war is done, surviving soldiers fought for the Union Britain have begun to trickle back into the cities. Some still injured, but most simply fearful that they will suffer repercussions for something they had no control over. Many are looking to realize in the military, even though the British Army is uh, no, by no means ready to accept them yet. Even though, so should these men be treated as veterans, that would mean treating their injuries and providing them stipends. A large number of Britons have sympathy for them, but those were the same men who, until just recently, were killing their own countrymen for the syndicalists. That should that be rewarded? Once more traitors. Give them full support. They want support traders. Anyway, IEDC review. And there you go. We need more resources still. Even better engines too. I like that. Exile relief efforts begin. While the Britons might not be as grateful for the presence, the returning exiles are undoubtedly in the best position to offer relief to those in the United Kingdom who have been left ravaged by, of course, the war. More Lount, Lord Mountbatten has led the way, spending billions of his own funds to set up homeless relief shelters in the heart of Manchester and Liverpool, and has called on his fellow exiles to follow suit. Soup kitchens in ten cities have sprung up from one end of the country to the next, some government funded by underwritten by the wealthiest exiles, some who have expressed, like Lord Mountbatten, that it is their duty to help those who have been left behind. A welcome sight. Fantastic. So what do we got here? Global presence, research speed, eh, eh. Repair speed would be nice. 
Yeah, we'll go with this one. British bankruptcies increase. Vohal Motors Limited closed the doors on its Luton headquarters today, making the third major bankruptcy declaration since the creation of the BRA. Most of these large companies have transferred over to union ownership during British rule, but the future of unions and serious question has left these companies in a state of limbo and without leadership. The BRA is preparing to step in and seize temporary ownership of corporations that are thrown and closed in the manner, but doing so would leave them in a state where the production is still on a standstill. If the situation is not resolved soon, British unemployment levels could reach record highs within months. It's not good. Um, I need to make sure that this thing should auto bypass if we already have that already done. So we're going to do these three and use uh, cons commands against them just because we have to have them done. But still, because trials begin. Trials have begun for the syndicalist leaders captured by British forces, including Arthur Horner, who turned himself in at a police did not long ago. Horner's trials have been receiving considerable attention in the British media. He's spoken quite eloquently about the need for Britain to come to terms with this labor of history, or history of labor, but also its future. Indeed, there are some who regret giving him the platform at all, as it seems to have gained major, many sympathizers. Some policymakers suggest that these trials are best used to make examples of traitors, but others say that harsh penalties will only inflare, inflame the resistance further. Make sure the sentences are not harsh. They must be made examples, including Horner. Yeah, pretty much. Improving the condition of Iceland. Uh, the land of the old Viking sages is also a land struggling for survival. The earth is not bountiful, and no modern nation can survive through in the fishing industry. We can help their conditions by setting new English roots on the isle. Let us encourage our soldiers to marry the locals and build new homesteads. Their work shall transform Iceland into a bountiful ice utopia. Aiding the new Indian Navy. With cross-empire trade picking up, the Indian government has decided to expand its naval assets to help protect the increased shipping. The Indian ambassador to the UK, Great Britain, and Canada has approached the government with a request for developing aid regarding both engineers and naval officers. This could be a great way for strengthening the empire's position in the Far East. They're on their own. Oh crap, that costs 100 political power? Um, so now we have, while Canada's borders remain largely static since Confederation, the changing situation around us provided us a whole number of new territories. These new lands will be integrated into Canada proper, allowing them to form their own elected governments equal to the rest of Canada's 13 provinces. So we have a lot of things going on here. We could deal with the Rust Belt, which I did the focus and automatically did it. And we need three divisions in each in here, so we're doing it with the pacification of Ohio to see what happens, but as a town of the CCF in his own right, active Reverend and Party Member Thomas Clement Tommy Douglas has recently been elected as the seventh premier of Saskatchewan. So many of the parties hold over the province and allowance to use it as a test bed for the new possible CCF policies. Spurred on by those past as an expert surgeon, doctor, and combat medic in the Great War, Douglas has also resolved himself to create a true warfare paradise in his province in order to spare all he can from the horrors and tragedies he had to witness. I would be planning to act a new comprehensive, publicly funded, and state-provided free health care plan that would provide single-pay universal coverage to every citizen within Saskatchewan. But we Douglas will ensure that no one dies of curable sickness under his watch ever again. Furthermore, Douglas, out of the development of God, has also began to push ideas of social gospel, the Protestant social movement that applies Christian ethics to social problems like economic inequality, poverty, alcoholism, crime, and more across the province, in order to uplift the masses and bring them towards a pure, safe, and godly ex existence where their need is met. Under Premier Douglas, Saskatchewan is slowly turning into a true social utopia, and perhaps the rest of Canada under the CCF is next. The great Canadian in the making. Cool. But we're going to do, like, establish the province of Michigan and whatnot. Now that social resistance has cooled, the former American state of Michigan will be committed to the Confederation as Canada's 14th province, eventually. And France has gone ahead and tried to kill themselves. Um, I really don't want to get involved, but Jesus Christ, what the heck is going on here? They don't have anything here. Uh, you know, if that's the case, we will start here in Portugal then. And push out, because they're just losing it here. And we'll get involved, but once our divisions are back, we'll, we'll get involved then. We gotta clean the red parasites, anyways. That's a good guide. We need more political power. We always need more political power. They're turning aristocracy first, though. Um. Here, trains. Here, ta-da. Mm, we'll get there eventually. We're, we're repairing our ships first. And yeah, we'll get there. Not looking good for our guys, though. But the, the, honestly, with the end of the international, the Germans have done slightly better, but honestly, not by much. I'll go Spain again. I just need our guys to show up and then we'll start attacking and whatnot, so... The Germans shouldn't be too god awful to take out, but still, you never know. Let's see. We do that one. Our one currency for the Entente. In order to promote trade, we should make it so that all members of the Entente have the choice to use one centralized currency. This will promote economic growth, unity, and trade throughout our alliance, as well as ensure economic parity between all members of the Entente. Unified broadcasting system. The CBC and the BBC have long functioned independently of each other. However, with the spirit of cooperation between the Entente and Full Swing, the proposal to merge the both with, as well as spread a unified network of radio programming has been seriously considered. Providing our allies with free entertainment is a surefire way to ensure their goodwill, right? And standardize industrial codes. Oh, 
Valentine training has expanded. While developed nations such as Canada have strict clothes in place for the development of new industry, certain less developed nations have no such regulations in place. If the Entente is a function, as a unified economic bloc, we must bring all Entente nations up to code with their rigorous regulations. We ensure that their industry is up to par and free from any debilitating, debilitating malapractice. Ah, why not? Better armor, maintenance, yes, good, good, good. Yeah, I'll go and grab this next one. Why not? Sure, why not? And heavy tanks, why not? There goes Italy. Goodbye, Italy. Well, we're here. Oh, it's going to cause another mass casualty event, but what else is new, you know? Also, we're going to need some planes down here as well. That's fine. Let them deploy first, and we'll, then we'll let them go. Yeah, the Wikidia is more conscription. It's just manpower. We'll only make one division at a time, so... Their division, I mean, they're thick, but are they really good, you know? The Pigao report that we did right earlier. The work of renowned economist Arthur Cecil Pigao is complete with much fanfare. It submitted a report officially titled The Restoration of Private Enterprise of the British Society Department. In it, Pigao outlines a series of steps of fairly privatized British businesses out of the hands of trade unions without turning all control back over to the wealthy. Most important in the steps of monetary reform, including the establishment of a new system of interest rate credit issues through a new government banking system. While the report is very popular, the government has received criticism from the public, with many declaring it simply to lead to a new system of inequality. The government, however, so far dismissed these devices belonging to cynicalist agitators. It is Poland. Bye, Poland. Oh, wow. Oh, the Austrian Empire is not killing them, too. Whoa. They're turning our stocks. The British exiles who have won or returned to the country only find that their lands have been stripped and the former homes are now occupied or demanding that the property be returned. The problem, of course, is that the new occupants assuming ownership legally, according to the Union of Britain, so they say having their homes now stripped from them is unfair. There's a simmering, simmering resentment against the aristocracy who fled after the uprising in 1925, which is feeding into this growing conflict. And now the government's been called to decide the matter once and for all. What was there should be restored as was illegally taken. The current owner should be compensated, but must still give it up. Their stocks will be compensated for their losses. Uh, I like that one. Just because we get more paternal autocracy. This is very interesting. The Austrians are now killing the, the Germans as well. Sarajevo Accords. Brother Etu. Here. And we're joining these guys as well. Oh! Oh. And we're in. And we're back in war. Look at that. Oh wow, we sunk a crap ton of convoys already. There we go. Third Valkyrie, this time we'll win. Well, hopefully. Nice. Still pushing back out. Wow. That's a couple subs here and there. They lost Valkyrie sub, subs, convoys, convoys. Oh, we gotta go with Ireland too. This is right here. Pairs, nice, pretty good. Pretty good. 
This is gone. German task force destroyed. And they're just kind of pushing through all of them. So nice. Reduce working class taxation. Beginning uh, bringing in the old measures of taxation is not going to go over well the working class, who are already stressed as it is. What well, with the upending of the country's entire economic system, some measures of tax relief is necessary. Though not caused a lot of considerable argument in the House of Commons, namely regarding who gets what and for how long. Implement the new Towns Act. God, we need more political power. Our urban areas are currently a mess, needing massive amounts of repair and restoration. The slums in particular are becoming nearly uncontrollable. An act to establish new townships in the outlying areas. Passing the development onto independent corporations should open to decentralizing our population, at least until the cities are once in start growing. Latania. Ooh, Serbia and Hungary. Oh boy. And all Spain has been basically restored. That's nice. Very nice. Losses, 6,000 versus... Okay, so let's take a look-see. German Empire. We killed off 300,000 of them. Not bad. We've done more than the other groups have. Artillery, heart attack, anti-air. Heart attack and break is fine. Nice. Our circuit guide. Absolutely. Oh god. Our allies lost quite a few ships. Catalonia's gone, that's good. Uh, I found the National Housing Project. A sizable portion of the British population is homeless thanks to the war. The NHPA will start to provide temporary shelter to uh, those who need it and start funding the construction of affordable permanent housing for those who cannot act for repairs on their own. Not bad. Are you a sea wolf yet? Come on. I don't understand how we're losing ships here. We should have absolute control over these seas. Or the English Channel, I should say. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're still completely dominating them, but still. Let's see if we can go in there too. Going. Naval mission efficiency will literally help us out. Good. Looking decent. Just force it. And force it some more. A battle cruiser look like though. Fall of Dublin. Nice. There you go. That's what we like to see. The Russian Republic. What the crap is that about? No sense. Oh, they have a lot of naval XP though. Alright, so with all this in, I like to send in the army. We're going to implement Abercrombie plan. Uh, let's do something. Oh, okay, it's a small amount. That's fine. Why not? Screw it. There we go. 
Oh no, Asian has been captured. Well, we're gonna go to Paris. Hope you all are ready for a vacation. Our sacred guide. Fantastic. Abolish Parliament. Who needed it? Look at all the mess here. My gosh. Another ace pilot promoted. Very good. Very, very good. My god. See, I knew they'd have to do something here. Good. Ah, oh, the French Kingdom's gone. What a fake French Kingdom. Look at all this messes. Messy, 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 messy. Stubborn. That sucks. Oh my god, how many combos are there? Holy crap! Enact farming subsidies. Trade restrictions have been met. Most British citizens have been on wartime rations for many years, so the expansion of our imports should uh, come as some relief. We do, however, need a subsidy as a farm so they can assist in rebuilding supplies. The rationing measures will also need subsidization until private markets can begin to manage on their own. Enact business subsidies. Between the corporations which are already in Britain, which should no longer be under union management, and the corporations that are returning to the country from abroad, both will have their hands full attempting to reorganize themselves to the new way of doing things. If you don't establish some, si some kind of subsidy program to tie them over, we can expect a great deal of bankruptcies and trouble ahead, of course. Yeah, what do you expect? Just a gigantic amount of losses. God, they're not doing well down here, are they? Of course, supplies are probably really bad, and they have no one to defend them down there, so... Not a problem right now, though. This is where you want to be. You're done. Oh! Wait, what? Wait, what happened? Why do we peace out? Uh, excuse me. No, we did not peace out with you. If anything, you're gonna return all these lands to everybody else, so... Um, that's really not cool. As we abolish parliament, which would be nice. We get more political power, we lose a little bit of stability, but whatever. Um, and then we'll do this one, of course, for time rules again. Our oldest foe, the German Empire's most vile and wicked enemy of the king that still stands. The Huns are responsible for most, if not all of our misfortune. They must be punished for the misdeeds. We will finally correct the great wrong and those committed with the peace with honor. Our English foe, English foe, English fear, brethren. <clears throat> Australia and New Zealand have been loyal soldiers for the Entente for quite some time. And now that Britain has been reclaimed and the path to imperial unity is becoming clear, we must reach out to our allies to, in the Antipode and hope that their empire can prosper together, stronger and more united than ever before, to captivate the American Eagle. The preparations are now placed with the greatest military operation embarked upon since the liberation. The loss of America is formerly our empire's greatest loss, not only outdone by the loss of Britain itself. Now that we reclaim Britain, we can finally correct the second greatest failure that continues to haunt us to this very day, securing our jewel. With most of the jewel lost to us, it's incumbent on our administration to restore the rule in India to its former glory. The jewel must be returned to the British Empire in its entirety, safeguard British Africa. Much of British Africa was lost to the Hun upon the revolution's dawn, with South Africa just barely hanging on. Even now, the British influence upon the mighty continent continues to wane. This must not stand. Africa must be secured for our empire by any means. Pacifying the Yankees. The Americans have made it clear that they are incapable of governing themselves. The Americans clearly long for the kinder, more prosperous days under the noble British guide. The failed experiment, huh? For almost the first time in 300 years, America returns to British rule. The grave injustices against a kind protector, massacre committed by Washington and the rest of the blue coat rabble, have been corrected to its fullest extent. America shall be raised, swept into the dustbin of history, and remembered as nothing more than a failed experiment in republicanism. Liberate Eastern Europe. Our vanquishing of the most elder foe has brought the Russian dogs out to pick the Kaiserreich's corpse. The brazen occupation of Eastern Europe will not stand. Russia must be confronted once in the fate of Ireland. Of course. Now the United Kingdom has been restored, we must turn uh, to the question of Ireland. We do not demand Ulster 1921 peace treaty. But the Irish state abandoned that treaty when they declared the Republic. For the sake of the Northern Prote Protestants, we must go to the Irish and settle the matter, or forego our claim to the United Kingdom title once for all, and the final central power. We have dealt with the sources of treachery which have caused our noble empire so much pain. 
However, one thorn in her sight still remains. The mighty Austrian Empire provides Southern Europe with nothing but trouble, despite the Empire's decay being on full display. We'll seize the moment to put the Double Eagle out of its misery. So, here we're at. We're just kind of hanging out. We're going to have one currency in the Entente, of course. United Unified Broadcasting System, Standardized Industrial Codes. But we, we got to go work towards an, an Imperial Federation. This year's Imperial Conference will be where our delegates shall propose an Empire Act to finally realize the long-held dream of an Imperial Federation. Under this proposed system, the various dominions will be returned to formal British rule. Well, some of the dominions are horrified by the concept, our allies in the United Empire League are delighted that their proposals are finally being implemented, which is fantastic. But we're going to do the final central power first. We've dealt with the sources of treachery which have caused the noble empire so much pain, however, one thorn in our side still remains. The mighty Austrian Empire will provide southern Europe with nothing but trouble, like we read earlier, despite the empire's king being on full display. Well, let's see the moment to put the double eagle out of its misery. But with so much political power, we're going to do this. Pass the Central Credit Act. One provision recommended by the Pigot Report has been to establish a system of interest-free credit offered by Central Bank, and never seen by the central government. These loans would allow private citizens to act as entrepreneurs. Uh, becoming a new class of business owners, we transfer control away from labor unions. The idea is to avoid rapid inflation, but to apply a jolt of private enterprise to an economy which hasn't needed that for decades. One, uh, and pass uh, that, and then desyndicalize the economy. It may not take long for the syndicalists to get their claws into every aspect of the British economy. Bring out all their worker-centered laws and restrictions will help, but we must also establish new rules lest the entire thing collapse under its own weight. The British economy must learn how to operate once again under the principle of the free market, and it'll take time. Pass the Veteran Employment Act. We have thousands and thousands of soldiers, not to mention returning exiles, who need to be put to work. There's certainly a lot of them to do, but a guiding agency would help ease the pr process and also prevent the exiles from being unfairly shut out of places that might be them with hostility. So we could go to war with Russia, but I don't feel like doing any more conflict in this campaign, uh, even though they feel like they probably want to go to war with us too. But you know it is what it is. Um, and anything else here? We're making some tanks, some rocket artillery. Sure, why not? Who cares at this point? Because we just want to do the focuses and the decisions. That's really what I want to do. Um, enact business subsidies? Between the corporations which are already in Britain and which will no longer be under, uh, be under unit management, and the corporations that are returning to our country from abroad, both of their hands full attempting to reorganize themselves to the new way of uh, <clears throat> doing things. If we don't establish some kind of subsidy program to tad them over, we expect a great deal of bankruptcies and trouble ahead. And of course, we're worried about farming subsidies. But we're trying to get rid of cynicalist resistance, which is taking forever to do, which I don't like how long it's taking. Um, but yeah. The failed experiment we already have. Remove American resistance, which would be nice. And then the Japanese threat rears its head. Most of our empire's foes have been dealt with. However, one persistent enemy remains. The Empire of Japan, despite its position and stature, has proven a great th uh, threat to our reborn empire. While many demand Japan be dealt with by force, many remember our old alliance forged with the Japanese. Even if standing as equals to the Japanese may horrify some. Remembering old alliances. Let's see what happens. Britain and Japan long ago forged a pact of mutual defense against Russia. We've long forgotten the sacred bond will serve as a basis of a brand new alliance between our nations. Now this pact will be born in a new form as Britain and Japan march together towards a common goal, and then the rising sun never sets. Integrate. Uh, should be integrated into Canada, huh? I'll do it anyways. Towards Imperial Federation. The rising sun. Now that Japan and Britain are united in a common alliance, Britain will assist Japan in the goals of influencing the affairs of China, or Asia. With the help of our Japanese brothers, we shall work to firmly establish a co prosperity sphere as a dominant force in Asia versus tear down the rising sun. Japan poses a threat to our empire that simply cannot allow. The empire of Japan must be torn down, securing one of the final slivers of this earth that has so far escaped imperial domination. A Chinese sphere of influence. When Japan dealt with, China is now free for the taking. Hong Kong, which was lost to us when the revolution hit, will now be the stepping point for a complete domination of the Chinese nation by the British interests. And where are we at? Yeah, just do that one anyway, that's fine. Uh, we'll go over here too. But yeah, that's how Europe looks like. We didn't get that much from the Russians or Germans, really. But we did get Belgium and, and these guys. And we got a little sliver of the Western Rhineland. We got a couple Germans living here. The Austrian Empire is looking awkward and weird. What the heck? So they took, was it Bukovina here or something like that? Hotten. And they got Bujak. Yeah, and they got the Romanian coast. So they really made sure the Romanian could not, no, longer, no longer have any sort of navy at all. Hungary is gigantically thick, but not as big as it could be. Greece is actually looking decent. They actually have a complete land border here. Oh, I forgot we took up Bulgaria too. Whoops. Albania is looking okay. Italy is forever disunited. Um, go figure. You know, whatever. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, also I took a lot of Africa just because we could. After the after the Germans lost their war, I'm like, you know what? We're taking it. I'm not gonna bother with fighting them on it. Um, next one, expand the power system. That'd be kind of nice. Medium air. That's fine. There you go. Might as well. Of course, I do want to fight the cynical resistance. I mean, it sucks that we have the resistance still. There's only a little bit of stability. We're losing weekly stability still, too, though. Which probably be good to get rid of. 
So, invite them to the Federation. Before we do that, we gotta make sure we got, like, good amounts of, uh, they like us a lot, so. Delhi and the South African Federation. So, you know, they like us, 170. 170 should be good enough, right? We're gonna do the Canadian Industrial Belt. The West Indies, West Indies Federation accepts our proposal. After a short followed period of debate, the government of West Indies Federation has firmly agreed to join us as we march towards an Imperial Federation. With their agreement, we're one step closer to uniting the Empire into a singular state. While integration will take years, if not decades, the process can begin unhindered. Even uh, with the government's agreement, there's still but one piece of the puzzle. It remains to be seen that there are many pieces that could truly fit together. I'll continue to improve relations here, too. Splendid. Forming them. Oh, I'll deal with these later. We can form it later on. Oh, God. And the South African Federation accepts. And these guys, too. That would be nice. Begin the process. All imperial subjects and territories of the British Empire are currently on time have accepted the proposal. Oh, the Dominion of Delhi refuses. Most of the dismay within the colonial office, the Dominion of Delhi has refused to consent to join the Imperial Federation. What an understandable decision. It may end to the autonomy that they have enjoyed since the exile. It's still something of a gut punch, like a jawed rebellion against a parent. When normally such a decision would be the end of our efforts, times have changed. His Majesty, nom Her Majesty, normally anyways, as the Queen of the Dominion of Delhi, whose authority is ex exercised and represented by Governor General. With this being the case, all it would take was a word, and the Dominion of Delhi's government could be dissolved, replaced by an appointed one, one that would consent where Rataji, Ratanaj, Tata and the government has not. Well, such a move would be the first of a kind. The dream of the Imperial Federation, if we wish for it to be a reality, may just require it. Already, members of the colonial office have presented the king with a document which could take, make this decree a reality. All he has to do is sign, and the dream of the Imperial Federation is that much closer. They should be made to accept. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm kind of tired of this campaign. Um, so, let me get rid of this too. I'm just going to straight up annex them, probably. We're gonna annex pretty much everybody, whoever we don't, we want, because it's 1946. It's almost 1947. We've been playing for a while. Groundwork for the Imperial Federation laid. Oh, it's India. Well, you know what? It's all right. I'm gonna save real quick, and we'll see what happens when we click on this one. Before we do too much else. In 20 days, and we'll read about this. India wants to be completely independent, huh? After we completely united them, spent all our extra time uniting them in the beginning. Well, Sam Black and Gombe Massacre, India declares independence, and a shocking move that flies in the face of British legality. Our little subjects in India formally renounce British rule. Making it known that the king is simply intended to enter sovereignty make legal mandate, the fools of revolt is swearing to fight to ensure their survival. Well, obviously, cannot allow such an insult to go unpunished. Already, the Royal Navy is preparing for the journey, and several areas to make landfalls have been charted. India shall be put down, and the Imperial Federation created no matter the cost. Oh, trust me, we'll get there. Draw work laid for the Imperial Federation. On Transvaal, Canberra, North Ireland, gains a co oh, cores. Interesting. Let's see what this step is. Uh, Deutsche West Africa refuses to ratify. Oh, India joins us. Oh, okay. And not a surprising move, the government of India has firmly ratified the Imperial Constitution, was joining us in the dream of the United Empire. The vote was a narrow one thanks to the influence of V.K. Krishna Menon. Uh, uh, past handily. With their ratification, another nation uh, unites under the warm embrace of the Imperial Federation, a home for all the two Britons. I was going to just annex them, but okay, yeah. That's fantastic. So that. They, they, uh, they join us. Australasia joins us. Hong Kong Legation Council. Hong Kong is part of the British part of the Triad Syndicate and now follows us to be the caretaker of the economy, the colony, membership in the council. Well, crap, now I have 17 million population, a recruitable population. We need to form it. So now we got to do that. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'm just tired of this campaign. So I'm going to see what we can do about this real quick. And then we'll do the foundation. The Anglo-Japanese Alliance. The Anglo-Japanese Alliance began in 1902 as an agreement between our two great island nations to assert and safeguard each other's interests in Asia and oppose Russian expansionism in the Far East. It ended unceremoniously in 1922, following the failures of the Valkyrie and disagreements of the Copenhagen Conference still at the sense. Our circumstances have greatly changed, and now both of our nations are embroiled in war with the great powers, or at least were it. Perhaps there is an opportunity to revive this old alliance and for us to work out on our mutual benefit for the defeat of the Kaiser and the Commune? Don't bother? Ah, uh, so the envoys. Javi's response. 
I bring word from His Majesty, the Mat Emperor. An alliance once existed between J J the Japanese and Britons. Long ago, we fought and died together. We shall honor that alliance. We are proud to fight alongside Britons once more. You are most welcome. Wow. Holy crap. We actually got that. Look at that. There's us. There's the Russians. There's the Sarajevo Accords. And there's the Belgrade Pact. We're still in the Balkans, too. All of North America. Oh, we also took over Brazil, too. And, uh... <clears throat> wow. We got the Empire of Japan. And the Co-Prosperity Sphere is up here, huh? United Provinces of China. Jesus. Oh, what are they doing? Oh, God. Oh, God. They're actually at war. Oh, no. We're good for now. I don't feel like it. I just want to get on and do some trade prowess. Russo Mongolian stuff, you know. Yeah. Return to Japanese lands. Oh, Empire of Japan. And we'll form the Imperial Federation. After years of exile, doubters proclaimed that we would never return home, but we did. After years of strife, doubters proclaimed that we would never peace, but we do. After years of attempts, doubters proclaimed that we would never birth the United Imperial State, but we have. The genealogical endpoint of the colonial project has been met with every single Brit from Ottawa to London, from the Kingdom or Kingston to Sydney, is united in a single state. Where there was once dire depression within the hearts of the imperial citizens, a new hope for the future has arisen. The empire almost wiped out in 1925 has truly been struck back into the pages of history, and the return of the empire shall never again be doubted. While integration proper will take decades, we shall face the challenges that pose this as one, with another division between us as a people. The imperial federation is the last reality, and with God on our side, shall never fall. We will no doubt face many challenges ahead, but for now we can rest, knowing that our work is near completion. You are Englishmen, and have subsequently drawn the greatest prize in the lottery of life. Will be known as imperial federation. Today, now, a joint announcement from the capitals. Of nearly all nations within the British Commonwealth, the meager merger of the entire Commonwealth into the so called Imperial Federation was declared. Following, uh, coming following years of struggle to reclaim their home, the British exiles emerging the empire in this fashion and completing what they call the illogical endpoint of the British colonialism, that being the unification of the empire itself into a single entity. With this federation's creation, many are wondering what is next for the British Empire, now just now one. Even more wondering, perhaps more importantly, just how long an entity this large, this spread out, can actually survive. If the Imperial Federation proves to be the next step in the British global domination or a failed national experiment, remains to be seen. Long live the Empire. Return to Japanese Islands? Yeah, that's fine. Nice. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the 70th Canadian Division. Nice. That's awesome. Look at our flag. We changed, too. Also, I did use Khan's commands to start doing all this stuff, too, because I'm just tired of it. Like I said. Uh, return on our investments. That's pretty good. Out of the Commonwealth Zone is pretty good. American Resistance, unfortunately, we still have. Abolish Parliament, Syndicalist Resistance, which we can't get rid of. We have post-war devastation, which we're, we're attempting to get rid of. Um, still getting there. How do you get rid of Syndicalist Resistance? Because it's still dragging us down. No. Oh, no, it's no longer dragging us down so much. We do lose weekly stability because of that, but... Interesting. Okay, well, whatever. I can only get 1.16 political power every day. Trade prowess. Looking pretty good. So remembering our old allies, and then... Our, our said never, we get a core in Hong Kong, huh? Canadian Brotherhood. Daily political power. Interesting. Japanese Brotherhood. That's really weird. But we're allies. That's really weird. We didn't do any of this tree, but fill in the void. So, I mean, this would have been alright. Uh, from the army, of course. But I don't really feel like doing this. We'll get there someday, maybe. But, you know, it is what it is. But I think I'll end the uh, campaign here. This looks very good. If you enjoy the video and the campaign, please consider leaving a like. It does help me out. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great Imperial Federation under Queen Elizabeth II. Rest of your day.